Reddit is a place where you go to find out what people really think. And it's where you can go for in-depth conversation that's two-way, that's really meaningful, uh, which is very different than other platforms. And the thing that's really different is that unlike social where you log on as yourself and you're kind of gaining followers and some people are really hunting for followers, Reddit is private. And so my Reddit is very different than yours because it starts with my interest. It's very personal. That's Jen Wong, the COO of Reddit. I'm your host, Patrick McGinnis, and this is FOMO Sapiens, part of the HBR Presents Network. My name is Patrick McGinnis, and I'm the guy who invented the term FOMO. That's short for fear of missing out. Today, FOMO is an epidemic, and it's changing us so much that it sort of feels like we're evolving into a new species. But FOMO doesn't have to take over your life. You can find the power to choose what you actually want and the courage to miss out on the rest. I'll show you how right here on FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. Welcome to FOMO Sapiens, the show where I interview people who are changing the world and ask them how they choose from among the many opportunities and options in their busy lives. Reddit just might be the biggest internet company you know very little about. Despite the fact that over 230 million unique users visit the site every month, it remains a mystery to a lot of people. So here's a quick primer. Reddit is a collection of moderated communities where users, known as Redditors, share links, posts, and images that are relevant to a given topic. And they post a lot. In 2018 alone, it's more than 150,000 communities played host to over 150 million posts and over 1.2 billion comments. Here's why all of this matters. Given its scale, Reddit plays a surprisingly important role in driving the public conversation and in taking the pulse of global opinion. That's why I invited the perfect person to talk about the site, its ethos, and its business model. My guest today is Jen Wong, the COO of Reddit, where she oversees business strategy. Previously, Jen was Chief Operating Officer and President of Digital at Time, Inc. Prior to Time, she had business roles at PopSugar and AOL. Jen earned her MBA from Harvard Business School, her MS in Engineering Economic Systems and Operations from Stanford University, and her BS in Applied Mathematics from Yale. Welcome to FOMO Sapiens, Jen Wong. Hello, Patrick McGinnis. It's Good to nice be here. to have you here. Thank you. Uh, So I'd like to start the show with the same question every time. And that question is, everybody feels a little FOMO sometimes. So what turns you into a FOMO sapiens? You know, sometimes you realize that there are things going on in the world and you're missing them. Uh, I know you're a world traveler. I've been a world traveler and just thinking about everything happening. And actually, I was just in China last week and... I have FOMO right now thinking about what's happening in China. So in China, I feel like it's the future right now. I was at a restaurant and I couldn't even pay because I didn't have WeChat. I didn't have Alipay. I didn't know what a QR code was. And they didn't take my credit cards and didn't want cash. And I'm thinking, okay, this is the future. And now I've gone back to the past and I'm living in the U.S. and not learning about whatever the next payment thing is. And... I have FOMO about what's happening in the future in China right now, honestly. That is uh, something I think if you've been in China, anybody can relate to because you try to go anywhere and pay and you can't. It's very interesting. And it is impossible to be in two places at once. Yes. However, so far. However, you're actually, I would say you're, you're helping us to overcome potentially that challenge over at Reddit where you're the COO because Reddit is a place that is full of information. What's funny about Reddit though is um, I remember when you first joined and I thought, I've heard of Reddit, and but I've never been to Reddit. And so as I started preparing for the show, I started asking all my friends, do you go to Reddit? Do you go to Reddit? And I found that many people, everybody heard of it, many people had never been. And there were some people who go there every day and it's part of what they do to gather information around the world. Clearly, they're not alone. This is a top 10 website in the US. It's top around 20 in, um, in the world, right alongside the Twitters and Instagrams and Netflix out there. But many people... It's shocking to me, uh, including myself, don't know about Reddit. So first of all, what is Reddit? And then why do you think it is that some people know about it? It's kind of like the Matrix and some people don't. Yeah. Well, Reddit is really different than kind of any other platform out there. 
Um, and first of all, the majority of our audience is under 35, not to make a commentary about age, but just to give you a sense of the demographics who are, are like or avid young followers. Heart. Yes. Um, and like in a perfunctory sense, Reddit is the world's biggest network of communities, but that's sort of belies, I think, like the richness of Reddit. You know, Reddit is a place where you go to find out what people really think, and it's where you can go for in-depth conversation that's two-way, that's really meaningful, uh, which is very different than other platforms. And the thing that's really different is that unlike social, where you log on as yourself and you're kind of gaining followers and some people are really hunting for followers, Reddit is private. And so my Reddit is very different than yours because it starts with my interest. It's very personal. Right. So my interest right now is I am deep in Game of Thrones. Okay, that's probably shared with millions of people. But I'm also deep in parenting because I have a 22 month old and I'm having private conversations about the fact that he didn't have teeth until very late and I can't get him to eat. And that is something that I can have a conversation I can have with a community of people on Reddit Um, that I'm not going to talk about publicly. And so Reddit's a a really interesting place because for me, I'm getting incredible advice from other parents about my son um, that's honest and in a safe environment where I don't have to expose who I am or who he is. Um, But I'm also not necessarily talking to you about it over dinner. So, um, you know, that's part of the reason why I think Reddit... Um, isn't necessarily discussed in that manner, maybe in you know publicly as much, but it's a very special place for a lot of people who go there. And if you, as you start to talk about Reddit more, people kind of come out of the woodwork. They're like, okay, I'm on there for DIY, or I'm on there for basketball, and you start to realize there actually are a lot of users. And I understand also that Reddit has has sort of each forum has a or each Reddit, I guess is what it's called, has a person who's sort of like the forum leader, yeah, who is directing or at least overseeing the conversation so it's more than just a bulletin board it's it seems to me that there's more going on there what is the i guess the difference between a a bulletin board and what you're doing yeah so the structure of reddit is different than anything you're probably used to so the way it works is we have over a hundred thousand subreddits which are basically communities each community i mean these communities cover like every topic on the planet and Each of them has a set of human moderators. Some have five, some have 50. And the moderators help the community set rules for how to keep the conversation on topic. So, for example, I am in r slash Polaroids. You know this. I love vintage cameras. Yes. I I have a huge collection of them. I love – I collect the film. It is a group of people who only want to talk about – how to fix their vintage cameras, how to take Polaroids with film that's 10 years old. And there are rules to keep that conversation on topic. And so we're talking about Polaroids and nobody's inserting a post about, you know, Donald Trump or the, you know, decrease in interest rates. Like none of that is pertinent to the fact that, you know, of of vintage cameras. So those moderators are kind of like our special sauce. They are how Reddit keeps itself really well moderated, really on topic, and keeps the bar for quality really, really high. And these people are volunteers. They are volunteers. They are passionate people who love those topics and love building this community. And they, how how many hours a week are they spending on this? Some a lot. I mean, some some spend a couple hours a day each. Um, We give them tools, which help them, and there's a group of them, so it's not, usually the burden's not on one person. But it comes from a place of passion, and they're builders, right? They're builders or they're leaders. If you think about, like, if you think about communities, there's a lot of different roles that people play, and most places on the internet don't allow you to play all of those rules, and Reddit does. You can be a founder moderator. You can be a creator, meaning, you know, or a conversation starter, because you can put a post or pose a question. You can be a commenter, right? We have a lot of comments, like 50,000 per minute. You can be um, just a reader, and that's fine. You can be someone who shows appreciation by giving an award to somebody. right? So there are just lots of roles that people play in a community, and Reddit's one of the few places that allows you to kind of fluidly choose what that is. And these people don't receive any compensation. They're, they're no. doing it for their sort of like if you were to 
run for the school board. You do it because you you want to be there. You believe that it's something that you can do for your community. That's right. That's fascinating. You mentioned that users are typically under 35. Do you think that's just because this is a newer site, a newer technology, or is there something about the way that the site operates that appeals to a younger user? Yeah, it's it's a good question. Um, we're actually 14 years old. So, uh, newsflash, yeah, I know that. <laughs> so, we we're 14 years old and we have had uh, a windy path. The, the ethos has always resonated with young audiences, right? There's a sense of empowerment. So, you can found your subreddit, you, your ideas are equal to everybody else's ideas. You can build upon this platform whatever it is that you want to do. Um, there's a sense of like contribution and authenticity, like the no BS that young people really want. And want, I think more and more these days, like, don't give me a paid influencer. I know that I know they're promoting that because they got paid. I want to know what people really think. Like, just just give me that. And I think that a lot of young people want that. And then the third is, I think um, a lot of folks are exploring things, you know, in their life. Um, sometimes it's areas of like very personal support that they're going through as they grow up and go through college and others are, they have incredible passions and they're just looking for other people. So like I hear a lot of folks say, Hey, you know what? My college age son is on Reddit and he is deep into robotics and he just wants to talk to other people who are into robotics. And, um, and that's, that's really common and they get a lot, get a lot out of that. One of the things that this this business does, which I think is really important to note, anywhere you go in the world today, whether it's the Gambia or it's Myanmar or it's Maine, my home state, uh, has a democratization of information. So yeah. you can find a young person who is passionate about something. They could be in a refugee camp somewhere, but if they have a phone in their hands, they can go somewhere to find ideas and inspiration, which is, which is I think, important. Now, that could be uh, – that can cut both ways, of course. But the, we should all remember that this information that we're looking at on our phones is being consumed by people all across the world and used for all kinds of different purposes. Now, your role uh, at Reddit, one of your roles is business strategy. And so we just heard about, I guess, how the business operates. I'd love to hear about the business model and how, how Reddit makes money. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. We have two revenue streams that we're working on. Um, the first is advertising. Um, it, you know, our view is that Reddit's a great place for marketers because marketers are important members of the community. And most marketers today will say, hey, communities are really important to me. And then you'll ask, well, what do you do about that? And they'll say, well, you know, sometimes I have some paid influencers, but it's not, there's not really a coherent strategy there. And Reddit's one of the few places where they can have a coherent strategy because what they can do is work with us to start conversations in communities early. And I think that's one of the well-known things about Reddit. You start a conversation on Reddit, it just travels everywhere. The second is if you want to understand where you stand with different communities, like what's your relationship with them, and then figure out how to build that. We're probably the best place and the only place to do that because that's how we look at the world is through the lens of community. Nobody else really does. And then the third is Reddit is really different in terms of the mental state of the people who are when you're visiting Reddit, right? So if you think about the pattern in social media, you might go into Snapchat 50 times a day for 30 seconds. In Reddit, your session length is going to be deeper because you're actually going deep in the content, into the comments and open to really sometimes detailed information because you're searching for something or trying to find an answer to a question or you have a deep passion so your knowledge depth is just a different level. And so even though it might be the same person, um, they're in a very different mental state and that's really valuable to Barkers because they want to talk to you when you're in all different mental states. So for us, you know, we're building an ad platform around that. It's going to be an auction platform, probably no surprise like other platforms, um, but it'll be anchored in all of those things, community, conversation, and that engagement. Our second revenue stream is around coin. So we have uh, a coin on Reddit called Reddit Gold. Um, to date, we haven't done that much with it, but believe it or not, people buy this coin and they buy awards to give to you to say, 
Nice job. Thanks, Patrick. That was a great So like a Patreon comment. kind of concept. Uh, but less about the user and more about the content okay. that was made. Um, so not about devout followership, but about like, thank you for that interaction. And we think that that can be a much bigger part of Reddit um, because users want to be able to show appreciation in more complex ways and express themselves in more complex ways. So I won't say more, but more to come on that this year. Listeners, there's actually, we have some, uh, we have some coins here in the office. They're very shiny. <laughs> they're virtual, but they're, they're floating in the air. And uh, Jen is going to give me a few at the end if I, if I do a good job with my questions. I can, actually. So you mentioned these, these new business models, one of which is very much tied to advertisers. And one thing that if you may have heard about Reddit, obviously, we've talked about many of the positive aspects. And like any community, when you have lots of people who are behaving themselves, you may have other people who are doing things that you don't like. And they're protected by free speech. And I know that's very core to the culture of Reddit. But at the same time, uh, it can be – it could uh, – the things that are talked about in certain places uh, within Reddit could be offensive to advertisers. And so they might be concerned about associating themselves with a site where there is speech that's happening that they could find offensive or that could be offensive to their users. So that is a very tricky balancing act. Yeah. As I think about that, that – imagine you get up every morning, that's one of the things that you have on your plate that you need to think very carefully about. So how do you think about that? Yeah. And what is the what is the way that you that you manage to uh, appeal to advertisers, maintain a, a open culture of free speech, but at the same time, have a place that uh, that is that is safe for those advertisers? Yeah, it's a great question. So first of all, what's really important to us is that openness and having healthy conversation, right? We're sort of old school internet in the ideas of that exchange and that flow and that empowerment. So that's that's really a fundamentally Reddit value. Reddit, every platform has a different information architecture. And I can tell you on Reddit, the way we approach safety is the, f the foundational layer is Reddit Inc. and a set of policies which are really focused on weeding out real universal abuse and negative behaviors. And then we have a team called the anti-evil team that um, basically enforces that and a community team that commu that communicates that. So that's what you would expect, frankly, from all platforms is like this baseline of policy. The thing that's really special about Reddit is what I talked about before is that middle layer, which which is a human moderation. So there's there's a couple things in there that are special. One is in the layer of human moderation, we have these moderators who set very strict rules for each of these communities, right? So your feed, like let's call that the global ocean of content for Reddit, is just comprised of like 100,000 bays, i.e. communities that feed into that ocean. And you can't post into the big well. You have to post into a community, and each community has human moderators who have rules who look at that content. So it's, a, it's like a safety mechanism because often their rules are tighter than the rest of the ocean. So like I described before with like Polaroids, one of those communities is Polaroids. Everything that goes into Polaroids, I guarantee you, is about cameras and film and photos. There's nothing bad going in that. It's certainly not going to make it onto Reddit. If you post into it, it'll be taken down immediately. That's true of every other subreddit. So that's a safety valve that exists on Reddit that doesn't exist in other arenas. The other one is we have a downvote button. And this one's really powerful. We have both upvotes and downvotes. And what that does is allow users to, all users, to say what they think is good content and what should float to the top. And while others have just upvote, downvote is a very strong signal to say, you know what, this doesn't match our values or our culture. We don't think this is good content. So that's really special. And then the third is for brands. Brands we give even more control. They can whitelist and choose what areas they want to be in. They can uh, target, you know, positively or negatively against things they don't want. They get a strategy team, which helps them set that targeting. They get to control whether they want comments on or off. I mean, they have a lot of mechanisms to control how they want their campaign. So that's how we approach safety. And it's worked for us. Again, it's different for every platform, but that's what's been working for us. I guess, let me give you an analogy and you tell me if I'm right. It reminds me sort of like um, there are certain uh, television shows on, say, a news channel 
that will do something controversial. And you'll see there's a there's the outrage machine takes over and then advertisers will pull from that show, but they won't pull from the channel. And so Correct. you're separating a specific subreddit from the overall property and your bet is that people will be able to tell the difference. Correct. So, for example, if you're advertising in lifestyle and you want to be near beauty and makeup, et cetera, you're not going to be near politics, problems with airlines. And all of that information is not going to be an adjacency for you. And when you think about – now we're going to go deep into the nerdy stuff. Yeah. If you think about sort of the price per – eyeball reach or mm-hmm. person reach vis-a-vis some of your other competitors mm-hmm. in the social media world. Are you charging a premium? Are you able to do that? Well, for us, we, we're moving mostly to auction, mm-hmm. which is we don't charge. The market decides. Or what does the market decide that you're a premium product? Well, here's what I would say. Um, there are parts of our products. So there are parts of our products that are not auction where we set the price. And yes, I would say those are premium prices. In the auction, the market decides, and because we're mid-flight in our auction platform, as with all auctions, if you get in early, you typically get efficiency early. Got it. Okay, advertisers, if you're listening, come that early. Was a cryptic, cryptic. <laughs> yet, if you, <laughs> I think, I think it's clear what to do there. <laughs> So you uh, and the company just raised $150 million from Tencent, which is, as I'm thinking about it, probably the reason you were in China last week. So why was Tencent the right investor, and how do you plan to invest $150 million for growth? If yeah. I had $150 million, mm-hmm. I'd, have to, I'd, I'd need about a day to think about what to do with it. So Tencent, I don't know if you know them, is are a really impressive company, and they have had enormous success with their investments all around the globe. And their core business is in every area that surrounds Reddit. It's in gaming, chat, interest groups, um, live streaming and video content. I mean, it's everything that kind of goes through Reddit and that Redditors, you know, try to do on our platform. So there's an incredible amount that we can learn from them in operating in that ecosystem in, you know, in a non-competitive way. Is the idea here uh, also about getting into China? Is China the future for your business as well? Or is, is it just that's just sort of an ancillary benefit? Yeah, no, it, 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 for us, we have global aspirations, but China is not the top of our list. Um, so right now, primarily, we're primarily operated in English speaking territories. Yeah. So that's not a focus. I mean, the investment is really helpful to us because it allows us to invest in building our ad platform. We're investing behind, um, obviously, gold and coin, like I mentioned before, and a lot more behind video. I mean, video is something that was not even – was not really something that we had for users to actually create video until last year and then just exploded. I mean, just – you know, went to billions of views from nothing. And so that's an area that we're going to invest in because clearly our users love video. And interestingly, our advertisers love video too because it's probably going to be the majority of the ad format before the end of the year. So you came to Reddit after a role as the COO of Time Inc. Why was Reddit the right place for you to go after Time? You know, I worked at a lot of media businesses and media businesses, especially Time, are incredibly mission-driven businesses. They are so, they're actually very user centric. Um, they're absolutely passionate about that. I mean, Time has a, is absolutely a mission based organization in terms of informing the world. And Reddit is too. And so that feels really good to me. Like, our mission is to bring a sense of community and belonging to the world. And you see it in every single product release, you know, company discussion that we have everything, even the conversation that we have with brands about how to interact with the community are all rooted in values in this mission. And that feels really familiar to me and really exciting. So there are a lot of through lines that are common despite being private. And now my worry is what's the slope of the line that's going up into the right, you know, not the direction of the line, like it was at time. And we have the privilege of being private and having the capital to to achieve that mission. So those are all incredible things. But the through line of mission is really common, actually. You talk about the challenge of 
keeping the growth going. Do you ever see Reddit, for example, buying a television advertisement to broaden its base to people who are watching TV but aren't on the site today? Is it is this the kind of thing where um, you can see the growth of the community coming from internationalization? Is it from reaching out to a wider demographic? Is it from having the same core users just spend more time on the site? Where does the growth come from when you have all that money to invest? Yeah. So we do have global aspirations, but before we really go full, you know, pedal to the metal on that, there are a couple of things that that we want to accomplish, right? So one is we do want to broaden our demographic. Um, we have a little bit of ma- mail skew, and we want to make sure that we have every audience on the site, you know, particularly women and topical areas. You know, we, we do cover every topic on the planet, but some with more density than others. So I'd say in the areas of like, you know, lifestyle and beauty and style, we could have more. I mean, we have great groups, but we could have bigger groups. Um, coin, I think, is something that's just at its infancy and is something that will really resonate globally. But I want to get a few things kind of done there before we scale globally. And that's the same with video, because again, we just released a video player last year, and we're just at the beginning of what that could be. And that, I think, will do well globally. So there are a couple of things that we're investing behind, you know, being very thoughtful about the stages. Um, But, you know, I think Reddit, our goal is we want a billion people or more on Reddit. And if you think about Facebook, everybody has friends and family, so they can be on Facebook. Everybody has interests, they can be on Reddit. And I think the need for community is universal and global. It's interesting because if we listen to your comments carefully, we can see at least, I guess, what Reddit believes where the Internet is going for for Reddit. But also maybe there's some hints about where the Internet's going overall, you know, coins and video. It's, it's uh, it, It'll be interesting to see what, what that looks like in the future. Yeah, I, I think that the... There's two things that will evolve, and one one area that I always say we have tailwinds in is our fundamental values around being open, I think, are um, really important to, especially when you watch Gen Z and the things they care about. Um, you know, they, the control over user uh, identity and privacy is something that people, I think, are have woken up and, you know, figured out is important to them and are really thinking about. Um, I think empowerment uh, is something that people are thinking about. Um, Having an equal voice, um, not being in like a personalization bubble and having conversations that stretch beyond whatever bubble you've been put in, also very important. So Reddit has a lot of those things that I think people want. They want that like authenticity and realness. So at the core, I think we have a lot behind us. And then from an experience standpoint, no surprise, you know, we're about empowerment. And so we want our users to be creative and do whatever they want. Video, coins, etc. These are things that are that our users take and just imagine things with. And that's what we want. That's our way of empowering our users. So, Jen, this is the show about finding the power to choose what you actually want and finding the courage to miss out on the rest. You are making decisions all the time, big, small, medium. What is your tip for making good decisions and sticking with them? If you wait for perfection, you really will end up in a paralysis situation. So going for what's directionally correct, um, like I always think of it as just go for the right, generally the right slope, um, is, is the advice I normally give. And I would say the second is move with velocity. Because here's the thing. If you move with velocity and you get to a point that is not where you want to be, at least you have the energy and momentum to get out of it. And so move with velocity at all times. Research has shown that where people get stuck in decision making is that they look at a bunch of options and then they won't pick one. They'll just sort of have a favorite, but then keep returning to the ones that have been discarded. So they don't truly discard anything. And that's where the machine gets stuck. So if you can decide on something, run after it, and then have the energy and the strength to, to assess how it's going and then maybe change course, you, you can be maybe the CEO of a company one day too. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, as we talk about these choices, obviously, you can't do it all. And I imagine that um, you are missing out on some things in order to do what you do. So what, what is it that you miss out on when you're building a business like Reddit? Yeah, and, and having a family. 
Um, you know, for a long time, you know, a big part of my identity was just being like an um, indie rock kid that went to shows like two or three times a week. And I'd say that whole part of my persona is just a little bit on hold. So if you were to ask me what the latest album is and certainly anything that's under, you know, what what used to be 10,000 pressing in, in CD terms, I, I don't know anymore. It's a little sad, but that is, that is what got sacrificed. That's not a bad trade-off, I don't think, actually. That's pretty good. I, w- I thought you were going to say, well, you know, sleep, but, um, but you look pretty well-rested. I don't actually need that much sleep. Oh, that's the secret. <laughs> that's the secret right there. So if you don't sleep, you don't have to miss on it as much. If people want to find out more about you and about Reddit, where can they follow? Mm. I'm kind of in the ether. I'm pretty private. Okay. So there is, I don't really have a place to follow. Okay, so maybe not you, but where should we follow Reddit? Follow Reddit everywhere. Go on Reddit. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Jen Wong, thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Patrick. FOMO. And now it's time for the FOMO moment of the show, which is the time when I talk about FOMO and its role in pop culture or tell you about something that's giving me FOMO. And today I want to share a tweet that I got from Andrew Foster, at Draw Foster, from Nottingham in the UK. Andrew wrote, Enjoyed this new podcast from at PJ McGinnis, the guy who first described fear of missing out, hashtag FOMO. Should ask the guests what they missed out on to achieve what they achieved. Can't have it all. So Andrew, first of all, thanks for writing in. Second of all, It's a brilliant idea. And the minute I heard the question, I knew that I had to include it in shows going forward. So if you listen to future episodes, you will hear your question. And I wanted to give you a shout out and thank you for your great idea. And to anybody who's listening, tweet me at PJ McGinnis. Come up with an idea or a question and you may hear yourself on the faux moment of the show in the future. FOMO. If you have an idea for the faux moment of the show, or if you have a question or comment, reach out to me at letsconnect at patrickmcginnis.com or send me a tweet at PJ McGinnis. Also, you can take the official FOMO Sapiens diagnostic at patrickmcginnis.com slash FOMO dash quiz and find out if you're a FOMO Sapiens. FOMO Sapiens is part of the HBR Presents FOMO. Network. The show is produced by AW360 and recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis. If you like today's show, please be sure to subscribe, rate it, and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at patrickmcginnis.com. You can also take the official FOMO diagnostic at patrickmcginnis.com slash FOMO dash quiz to find out if you're a FOMO sapiens.